Completing a Stuart triple expansion engine part 46, fitting a connecting rod pin and drilling the water pump operating arm followed by refitting it in place on the crosshead. I don't know why but I actually lost this pin in my main workshop which came as a bit of a surprise because the other two pins are fitted in the forks of the connecting rods. I don't know why I didn't fit this third one and luckily I found it in a box in the workshop. So here it is, temporarily fitted in place. What I'm mainly doing in this episode is drilling a hole in one of the two gunmetal brackets that operate the pumps. The one that I'm showing currently operates the vacuum pump for the condenser. I'm going to drill the hole in the bracket that operates the water pump. The water pump is used to pump cooling water around the condenser, but that's on a full-size engine. I don't think I'm going to be piping these up. They just look good. The reason for working on the water pump drive first is that the operating arm is a perfect shape for this job. The operating arm on the vacuum pump needs some attention because it needs to be a different shape to clear the top part of the actual vacuum pump as the crosshead goes up and down. I'll show that in a future episode. The thread on the end of the pump ram is 4BA and clearance size for 4BA is 964 of an inch. I am taking things a bit for granted. I think that for this application, 964 of an inch may be a bit small. Have a close look at this clip that I showed previously. This is the water pump operating arm that I've removed, and you can see that it's very slightly marked by the end of the ram on the water pump. I think I'm going to go with that. I'm making a mark with a felt tip pen, and the hole just about looks in the centre, so I'll see what happens. All I have to do now is drill a hole in it. For this job I'm using my Proxon Minimot drill in a Proxon drill stand. These are very good for a variety of jobs in the workshop and because these small Proxon Minimot drills aren't really that powerful there's far less chance of snapping off small twist drills. Now it's time to bolt the operating arm back in position on the main crosshead. This isn't a very large engine and I'm really finding it difficult getting at these small parts. On screen at the moment is a socket. It's part of a precision socket set that I have. Cheap and cheerful and very useful. Even at this small size though, it's still too big to successfully fit the hexagon bolts back into the crosshead. If you follow my videos regularly, you will know that I have a very small Walco WM180 lathe in my second workshop that's built onto the house. I'm going to use this to reduce the diameter of the end of this socket. Now I've changed the position of the camera, you can actually see what I'm doing. I'm just reducing the diameter of this socket part of the way down. I'd better mention that the reason the image is moving about slightly is because this lathe sits on foam pads. It's not just that though, I'm stood on a wood floor as is the tripod right next to the lathe. As I move around, the tripod's moving around as well as the lathe on its foam pads. It doesn't really matter, it's just convenient to use this. For any serious lathe work, I would use the lathes in my main workshop. Now there's enough room to get the socket on top of the hexagon bolts, so with very little effort I can bolt them in place. I'd just like to mention that these operating arms are also part of their respective crossheads. At this stage I was wondering whether I'd got it right or not. And when I look at this image, I think it's okay, although I did actually use a needle file very gently to open up the hole. I did think that the clearance hole was a bit tight to start with, so by using the needle file, as you can see, it just makes it a bit bigger and the tolerance allows for a little bit of play. I do find it's good not to get too anal with jobs like this, because don't forget, when this engine is in steam, it will get hot and things will move around. Not on every part, but on some, it's a good idea to build in a little bit of tolerance. After fitting first one nut, followed by a lock nut, the assembly is tight. I'm applying a bit of oil to every moving part in this area, I'm gently turning it over. Once I realised that the fit was very good, I tightened up the lock nuts a bit more. There is a tight spot on this engine, but it's nothing to do with the part I've just fitted, it was there before. 
Also, from past experience with this engine, it is not the crankshaft that is perfect. What I'm going to do is soak all of the parts in oil and rotate the engine using my small electric drill. In an episode coming up soon, you'll see what happens when I apply some compressed air to the engine. No point in doing that though at the moment, because two of the connecting rods aren't connected. By rotating the flywheel manually, I can feel a tight spot. It's not the end of the world, it's just a slight tight spot. In this clip, with the connecting rod still not attached, I'm rotating the engine using my small electric drill. In the next episode, I will be connecting the connecting rods and trying it on compressed air. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.